What's going on everyone? My name is MG The Future. I wanted to bring you guys another tutorial in regards to the Harrison Mix Bus. I've been getting pretty good feedback about it. Um, I know I'm targeting specifically on um, producers who have used various programs and might be thinking about adding Harrison Mix Bus to their workflow on the end of their workflow. So an example of that would be like a, a machine user. If you're using Native Instruments Machine, we don't have a linear DAW to kind of you know add a little bit more advanced sequencing. So you would track out your sims from machine, put them in the Harrison, and then finish your mix there, pull in all your other plugins, use the tape console and default plugins that come with Harrison, or even just use Harrison by itself without plugins because it has the EQ, filter, compression, dynamics, and tape saturation. You can kind of make some of your creative mixing in the machine and then your final polish in Harrison Mix Bus. That's one example. Another example for workflows with a Harrison Mix Bus is for someone like me who's venturing into lo-fi or old school hip hop production. So we're using beat machines. And of course their sequencers are limited by default, but with Harrison Mix Bus, of course, as shown in my previous video about it, you can just record each track in the Harrison, arrange it, flesh it out, mix it, finish it. Or if you're one of my FL Studio followers, you know, FL Studio has always had this reputation of having an interesting audio engine. So either it's a situation where you feel like it's too thin, or it's a situation where you feel like your bass is drowning out elements, or it's a situation where you adapt it like Cardiac, Boy Wonder, and the others, and you started to overdrive the mixer and overdriving your drums to compensate. And as a side effect, you get a new sound, which is what we all are used to in trap music. But let's say you don't do trap. What if you just do boom bap? What if you just do R&B? What if you do one of the EDM genres and the, the bass is not that as important as the other elements in the mix? Well, you would bust it out of FL Studio using the export option to separate your mixer channels, throw it into Harrison, and now you got the analog warmth and saturation and a different summing engine designed by those guys. So this video is about how to add a VST into it so in case you get to that step or you're using, you know, like a hardware synthesizer, and you don't have VSTs, but you want to add a baseline to it or you want to add a lead to it. I'm going to show you how to set that up. Um, it's a little tricky at first, but thankfully, um, I pulled out my hair a long time ago with Cubase VST back in 2000, 2001. When my dad got it, I had to learn how to use it. Same thing in Harrison. So it might not be ideal for MIDI yet, but it's there. Um, the second part of this video, I'm going to address this first so I can get into the teaching part, um, is I want to respond to the feedback I got on the UHE video. I got a decent amount of views in a very short amount of time, and I got a lot of feedback seemingly from the UHE guys. And basically, there's a few clarifications I want to make up for it. Um, one of the things that stood out to me in my mind was that they wanted me to be sure I understood what they were modeled after. Because I made a comment that the Repro 1 could replace the Evolver, which is true. However, it's not marketed as such, and it's not even modeled after that directly. So I do want to clarify that for anyone who's aspiring to buy it and click on this video. Um, another thing, I was having a lot of CPU usage issues. I have an i5 Mac. I have 12 gigabytes of RAM. And I have some very heavy VSTs, Omnisphere, Contact, Serum. None of them caused the type of problems I had with the UHE Pro 1 and Pro 5 demos. So my conspiracy about it is that it's not the demo timer and the static it does. The buffer is actually the program. Um, and if it's not me not being sufficient with CPU usage or multi-core enabling, then it's the code for the demo causing that problem. And it puts a lot of people in a, a, a gray area because if you buy it and it's not because it's a demo, then you're in a situation where you really can't use it. So uh, my hope is that maybe we can get a different version of that beta that we don't have to worry about that static no more. So we can get a true blue read on how this thing performs and not have to deal with the discrepancies on is your computer good enough? Is it the demo timer? Is it the strange behavior in different platforms? Because I ran it in Harrison and I had the same problem. And I'm going to show you guys 
um, the MC mode. Because a lot of UHE guys are saying, hey, MC equals multi-core. Um, thanks for the video. Good sounds. Just for clarification, Repro is the SC Pro 1. Cool. Um, and TUC, who's done some of the presets in it, um, he says, can you make sure the MC button is on for the multi-core support? So they wanted to make sure that I'm doing everything in my ability to have a fair representation of it. So let's get to it. Let, let's do Harrison Mix Plus VSTs. Let's use the Profit 1 and Profit 5 Repro brand by UHE. Both analog modeled things, so they should sound beautiful together. And that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Yo, if I get this stuff working, bro. Anyway, so Repro 1 is here. You just go to UHE.com website, go to home, go to public beta, which is their first news story. And you're going to be able to get a download link from the KBR forum. You get both Repro 1 and 5. And what's beautiful about that idea is that when you buy Repro 1 for $99, you automatically get Repro 5. You get the license for both for the cost of one, which is ill. And that might be limited time, but it's a very smart, dope move. And they explain it here. I mean, what they are, and this is what they I got clarification about when I compared it to Evolver, is that the one is designed after this bad boy, which was mono at the time. It came out during the time that the Moog dropped Prodigy, Roland dropped a SH. So that's why we see SH labeled presets in it, because it's from that time period, those type of uh, synthesizer uh, uh, capabilities. And then the Prophet 5 is uh, the polyphonic version um, so you can play chords, so it's more heavy on pads, keys, etc. Brass, especially brass. And this is like, this synthesizer alone has been remade the most in both hardware and VSC form, by the way. It's one of the greatest ever. And the reason why I made the comment I made about the Evolver, is because the homeboy made both of them. Dave Smith, he's considered a legendary figure in the synthesizer world. He founded Sequential Circuits. And design the classes such as Prophet 5 and VS. And when you scroll down, you're going to see that the Evolver has the step sequencer. And it also has the wavetables and digital oscillators of the VS. But it also has the regular uh, analog uh, oscillators, which would have been on the Pro 1. So that's what my comment meant. I was aware of what you guys are modeling. But to clarify, I would read both of them are so good I would replace my Evolver with them make sense so cool <laughs> clarifications are imperative and lastly if you tune into this video and see Harrison for the first time currently on a Black Friday deal you can grab the version I'm using for $29 let's do it so Harrison Mix Bus um, I've used it a couple of times today I like it a whole lot for mixing. Um, this is what your default window looks like when you set it up after the first time. We want to do a new session. Here's some presets here. When I show you how to set up the MIDI, I would recommend you create a MIDI template so you don't have to do this each time. So we're going to do a VST MIDI setup. It's going to be the name of our session. Once you have a name for your session, hit open. Make sure your sound card is selected. I want to run it at 1024 samples just to compensate for any problems I might have with my VSTs. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. This will open up Harrison. I have it set up to scan plugins, but what's beautiful about this program, they gave us a cancel button. So after it's finished a complete scan, all your plugins are there. You don't have to scan it each time. By default, it doesn't scan though. So we want to go to Mixbus. Preferences down to plugins, VST. If you have VSTs that are not AU, enable it, enable scan. If most of your stuff is AU, just enable scan. Close this box, close Harrison, reopen it. The scan will begin, let it finish once, and you're done. Then you can go back here in preferences and turn the scanning feature off. Because I'm uninstalling and reinstalling different demos for the Black Friday weekend, I'm keeping mine on. So when I add new plugins, it just scans them. Now I'm going to go to the editor. This is sort of the default Harrison Mixbus view. The only thing I adjusted was this panel here, 
which is our mixer. It's under View, Show Editor Mixer. It's something that I like to have and we're used to seeing in like Studio One and stuff, Pro Tools, uh, Cubase, etc. Now we want to create a MIDI track by right clicking in an empty gray area. These are all the tracks you create in Harrison. We're going to do MIDI tracks. Um, we're going to name it. Let's do the Repro 5 first, just so we can test out the chords on uh, multi core mode. Mono, cool, cool. Um, you don't have to worry about mono or stereo, that's grayed out. You just name your synth, click on this drop down box, and it'll choose your synths. You see how this drop down box doesn't have a scroll feature? Let's say you have a long list of plugins like I do, you want to get to the bottom. Select something midway down, like play, reopen it, and then it starts at where you click last. So you can see everything. So Repro 5, let's try AU format. We're going to do head add and close. So that gives us a MIDI track. Um, if you expand it, you actually get a piano roll. Boom. Piano roll is really dope. You can use your pencil tool which is here, and draw in notes. It's created this little region to draw between, so I want to expand that first. So start and end time. I want to expand this as well. Let's do an even range. I'm a little bit OCD about things like this. I want to show you these tools real quick. These are to draw your notes. As you can see, they automatically fall in line which is dope. The moment they add a scale feature to this, it's gonna be off the hooks. It's gonna be a lot like uh, Logic. But anyway, um, you can change your snap to like quarter beats instead or something, right? And you get smaller notes. You can change your snap to bar. You can do your downbeats first, etc. So the snap dictates all of that. Beats is probably good enough. And we can do it, snap it to grid. You can draw in your note values. And when you're finished drawing a, a general, you know, pattern or drums, if you're doing like battery or something, go to the edit tool, which is right here next to the pencil, and then you can adjust the notes, etc. And then you can use this too to highlight notes and right click on them for context menu to do the different functions that this program currently has. Delete. Like I said, it's an add on to this program. It's not the bread and butter of it but it's good that we have that ability. I'm gonna go back to my pointer tool and get rid of this region because I'm gonna record something in in a minute. But let's dive into Repro 5. So assuming you're cool with that, we wanna be able to hear it from our actual MIDI controller, I'm assuming if you're using this program. So we gotta set that up. I'm gonna right click, go to inputs for MIDI. There's three tabs. The one that you want is gonna be hardware. Um, this is configured on Mac by the Apple Sound and MIDI Preference Panel, Control Panel. So it reads it from there. So if you don't see your device there, make sure your Mac sees your device. So mine's is the cord. I'm going to enable it with a green dot, close it. Now, when you arm this to record, you'll hear the synth or plugin that you added. Ill. So we're going to bring up the Repro 5 by double clicking on it here. It's always at the top of the chain. I'm in the demo mode, and the UHE guys were saying, make sure we have MC turned on. This helps spread the usage over multiple cores, if you have an i5 or i7, etc. Um, we dive into presets. TUC was one of the guys that commented. I like his crush pad design a whole lot. Mm. Let's check out chord progression real quick. I'm going to use smaller chords just in case that cutoff is because I'm playing too many for my CPU or the limitations. That's the demo. I expect that. Once that goes, we'll try that again. So this is real mad decent. The only problem is the more keys I add to my chord, the crazier that static gets. 
And I know it's counterintuitive because half my tutorials I'm drawing, but sometimes I play. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. This plugin is ill. Let's try brass. Something a little more aggressive. TUC hasn't. Uh, let us down yet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's dope. It's not actually acting up right now. I'm impressed. However, the moment I record it and try to do things with it, like uh, utilize it in a recording, it just goes downhill from there. So I want to test this out. Static from the demo, whatever. Um, I'm going to give myself a longer region. I'm going to start recording here. Let's set our tempo to something that we normally do. So trap nowadays... Is around 130. I think Gucci game was like 120, 128. Well, I'm gonna do um, 130. Um, start time eh, around here somewhere, I guess. Just out the way. I'm gonna start back here. Once you set your tempo, which is the most important thing, um, so your grid is lined up, so when you quantize, everything is smooth. Then you can turn on the metronome, which is here. And when you hit play, you get your metronome. So I, I know there's a way to do pre-count and stuff like that, but I just kind of play whenever I want. Like I'll set it a bar before I think I'm going to record and then um, I'll edit it and fix it after I do my performance. So you hit the record. So make sure you're armed to record, of course, to hear it through your MIDI or so your MIDI is read. Record the actual in Harrison and then hit the space bar. It's going to count down for me. I'm going to play to the metronome. bad all right so now we got a recording we're going to want to quantize it of course because i missed it a little bit um so we're going to use our edit tool to select the notes now i can right click them we're going to pull up our quantize menu which is based on your grid or you can choose directly um this is not broken down into like 16s 32s and stuff but what i think it means is it's beats half a beat triplets or third of a beat fourth of a beat to some really small measures. So I do beats over two. That seems to be mad decent for me. And they even gave a swing if you want to test their swing out on like drums or something. Um, so I'm gonna do quantize to beats over two or half beats. It fixed that one, it put that one on the downbeat. I'm happy. I'm gonna go ahead and close this a little bit so I can fix this region. Boom, boom. Starting in time, yeah. I'm gonna select this region now, or this clip that I created. Right click, loop the range. That'll give us our loop markers so we can start uh, adding tracks or additional VSTs to it. This will just be what I build off of. Um, and of course you can make copies. So if I go back to the pointer tool and hold control, I can do another one and I can extend my loop range if you need that. And if you kind of work like I do, where you have everything in markers and setups, you could right click in this markers region, do new location marker and double click it. And this would be our intro or our, our drop really. And that's how you get started. And if you hold hit loop, it'll loop between them. Now to hear what you played, disarm the track from record. And you can turn the metronome off now too. Now, 
the next part is let's say you get all these MIDI tracks and you got the full version of Repro 5 and you got your drums going, but to still optimize it for studio or audio use, you want to dub this stuff to audio. As of this particular version of Mixbus, from what I understand, there's not a bounce to audio feature. Um, so it's old school in that regards, but you can set up a bus on the mixer. Basically, my thinking is you bus it to one of these buses here by enabling it and renaming it. And then the audio from this bus, you can then route to an audio track and record that audio track. I've tested it a few times. I don't like doing it that way because it causes a lot of different problems that might be because I missed a step. So logically for me, we just do it the old school way, export audio. So I'm going to give myself space between a before and after this loop. So when I put the start marker here, we're going to have a gap. It's going to begin. So it hits that first transient and then we'll have a gap here at the end. The render or bounce is between start and end markers in this particular program, not the loop ones. So I'll adjust the loop markers just in case not to throw it off. We'll go to file session export export audio to audio files um we're gonna work with a 24-bit wave we're gonna label it brass stab it's going to go in our session folder you can change the location if you want but i'm going to keep it there i'll hit export on it and as you can see it did from the start to the end now i'm going to mute this track and i'm disable repro 5 so we can Stop getting that static sound. I'm going to go to my folder. Here's just my Harrison Mixbus projects. Here's the name of this session. We're going to expand it. Go to export. Brass stab session. Now it's drag and drop. Boom. It creates a new audio track. Mono or stereo, depending on what you drag into it. Then we're going to get our pointer tool. We're going to drag it into place. We're going to loop it. We got our MIDI track muted. So hopefully we just get audio. There's a little rush on it. You hear that? Like that. Um, that might be where it is. So let me zoom in a little bit. It's definitely over the line. I might have just needed a longer region for the end. I might be able to loop it. So let's cut that, right? Let's use our line tool. Let's cut all of that. Let's loop this one. Let's cut all of that. Let's go back to our pointer tool. Let's hold select. I'm sorry, control, left click, drag. We're still snapping to beats on the grid. We should do bars when we're moving stuff around, but Beats allowed us to use those intervals we did to cut it up. So now we'll hit loop again. Let's see if this feels or sounds better. That's interesting. It only happens in the beginning, that cut, but it's fine here. So let me test the theory out. Let's go back one. Let's start from here. So something about the Harrison's loop feature, maybe, that causes that quick processing. Yeah. It telling itself to loop causes a, a, a split moment glitch, but it's not your audio. So it's nothing to worry about. It can get to you like mentally, like, yo, I don't like that. But when you export it and bounce it and everything, it's not going to sound like that. And I give myself plenty of room for that reason. So just some pointers that I developed. This is not there in their guide. This is not how they teach you how to use it. This is how I personally use it. So now I got an audio track of the Repro 5 with no static, no beef, no problems. So it might just be when I'm playing it live. We bounced it. Got 24-bit audio wave. Um, now when we go to the mixer on this bad boy here, we can destroy it. So let's destroy it real quick. Let's loop it up. Enable the 
leveler. I can't even bust it. And we can take advantage of that bus saturation, tape saturation, which is here. So you just add a little to it. And after you get enough buses or enough tracks, these have a cumulative effect. And then the master tape one is a different type of saturation. When you mix those eight and that one together, it just blows the whole uh, FL Studio thin mixing audio engine thing way out the water. You don't have to worry about it no more. Cool. So that's repetitive. It's going to get boring. I understand. Shout out to Lex Luger for giving us that chord progression. Um, let me do one more MIDI track, though. So I'm gonna do another one just to show you guys. We're gonna do uh, empty area, right click, MIDI track. This time, I'm gonna do something for drums. Um, what VSC I got? Oh, Heat Up got drums. Or Machine, if you wanna bring that into this workflow. Heat Up 2 AU, drums, blom, bomb. And I wanna show you how it handles drums a little different. Um, Right click, we're going to configure our inputs, make sure the Triton's turned on. Make sure it's armed to record so it'll respond to our keyboard. Double click on the name of the VSC at the top here. Oh, load up a drum kit. works for me. Boom. Let's take it back. Let's give ourselves a little count in with the metronome. Hit space and it should be good to go. Cool. We got MIDI for the drum. So I'm going to right click here and show you the note mode. We can do percussive. Boom, and we get percussive notes instead. This way, when you zoom in on it, it's a little bit easier on the eyes, easier to understand. Um, let's zoom in. Boom, boom. I wanna zoom in further, come on. Something like that. Make sure to use your edit tool when you're dealing with the MIDI stuff. Highlight those guys. We're gonna right click on the red area to get a context menu. It's actually harder to do when they're that small. And we're gonna do quantize and snap to half beats as well. Make sure that first one's on the line. We're in our loop region, let's loop it up. And keep, and remember that, I'm not saying that out loud, but disable arm to record so you can hear with the playback. And let's turn that brass down a little bit. Now, if you switch back to your pencil tool, you can then draw in more elements like hi-hats. So let's do hi-hats real quick. Let's do half beat snap so we can get in between. We're good. Let's find out where they are though. Arm to record.
Okay, cool. Let's do that one. Every downbeat. Now I want to change that grid to beats over three. We get way more resolution. Loop it one more time. So yeah, it works. Like you can do that. Like if you're into that step sequencing and you want to use Harrison Mix Bus for everything, technically you can. Now for me, it doesn't make sense for me to do it this way. I just wanted to show it to the random person who goes, can I make beats in Harrison? Yes. But workflow considered making beats in here may be secondary. However, if enough of us get it who are beat makers and producers, they might add more features for us because it has a solid foundation, but it's going to need things like ghost channels, scale mapping, better views for those clips, etc. Nothing to a giant, I assume, but you got to buy it. <laughs> got to get to twenty nine dollars. Start there and work your way up. Um, and that, but that's pretty much all I wanted to show you was that workflow of how to produce an Arison mix bus from scratch and um show you the repro five and multi-core mode. It allowed me to play chords a lot smoother than my last video. Um, is there anything I'm missing? I don't know. If you have comments, questions, or concerns about this workflow, let me know. Um, just a reminder, all these regions that you create, you want to use this uh, little finger tool and kind of zoom in on everything, get everything even. So this way you can then hold control and then copy your arrangement over. And when you make copies like this, if you make adjustment to one, it makes it to all of them. So if you want to adjust the velocity of those hi-hats, it'll affect all of them later on. So just like this thing that you can do, it's in one of their videos, you can unlink them basically. But you just start arranging your song just like that and add one element at a time. Um, and this is my first time doing this completely. So I imagine after a couple of sessions, I'll get faster at it. And so will you. So I just wanted to show you where to get started. Hopefully that's beneficial and helpful to you guys. Um, I'm gonna do another video though, um, fairly soon if I have time about tracking out from our existing workflow, pro our beat making programs and setting up your mix and arrangement in Harrison, which is where I personally think it, it shines. And hopefully after seeing this video, people will be like, yo, Harrison, we wanna switch to Harrison. <laughs> Give us this, 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 and this, and this for MIDI. So thank you guys. If you're not a subscriber, definitely subscribe. Till next time, peace.